64-bit processors are on the verge of becoming mainstream for Android devices, but they aren't only for the big name OEMs. Elephone has just released its first 64-bit smartphone. Hello there, my name is Gary Sims from Android Authority and this is the Elephone P6000. If you haven't heard of Elephone, that's not surprising because they're not that big here in the West yet. However, this Hong Kong based company has been producing some interesting phones recently. If you want to know about my feelings about the name Elephone, then please check out my review of the Elephone P3000. Enough said. Okay, moving on to the design and build. The first thing that struck me about this device was how solid it felt. The weight, the case and the construction make the device feel sturdy. This is also helped by the thickness. At 8.9mm it isn't overly thin, which in my book makes some devices feel too delicate, but it isn't overly thick either. In terms of design language we are talking about black and grey with rounded edges. Most of the phone's exterior is made up of the back battery cover. There are no separate edges per se, but rather a deep removable casing that includes these edges. Even the volume rocker is part of the cover. Interestingly, Elephone has tried to make this a little more elegant by sloping the cover edges towards the corners. This gives the side of the phone a slight curved look as the cover slides downwards and the screen takes over. On the front is the 5 inch 720p display, the front facing camera and a set of blue capacitive keys at the bottom. The home key glows when used and also flashes when you have a notification. But the back and the menu keys don't have a backlight. Down the right hand side are the volume rocker and the power button. Both are easily accessible when the phone is held in your left hand, however they might be a little bit too close together. Sometimes I found myself turning the phone off by mistake when actually all I wanted to do was adjust the volume. On the top you'll find the 3.5mm headphone jack, while on the bottom edge is the micro USB port. Elephone has placed the micro USB port off to one side rather than placing it in the middle. It looks different, but at the end of the day it makes no difference, for better or for worse. Flipping the phone over you'll see the prominent Elephone logo, the speaker grille, the flash and the camera lens. The 5 inch display on the P6000 is very good considering the price point of this device. The IPS display has a resolution of 1280 by 720 and that works out about 293 dpi. Overall the colour reproduction is good and the definition is great, as are the viewing angles. Some people like full HD displays for 5 inch smartphones, however for a budget device 720p is more than adequate. At the heart of the P6000 is the MediaTek MT6732. It is a quad core Cortex A53 based processor which is coupled with a Mali T760 GPU. This is the first time I've tested a phone with this combination of GPU and CPU and overall I've been very impressed. During 2015 this kind of CPU GPU combination will become the norm for low and mid range phones. The Cortex A53 is ARM's super power efficient variant in its first generation of 64 bit processors. The MT6732 uses four Cortex A53 cores all clocked at 1.5 GHz. According to Elephone this processor is 20% faster than MediaTek's octa-core 32-bit Cortex A7 based processors but yet with 30% less battery consumption. My experience of using the P6000 is that the processor package is fast. The UI is smooth and rapid. In fact it offers the fastest UI that I've personally seen on a Chinese OEM phone. The P6000 handled everything I asked of it including gaming and video. For a breakdown of the individual benchmarks please check out the written review. Ok on to the hardware. The phone comes with a 2700mAh battery which is slightly less than I expected. I guess the rationale is that the 64-bit Cortex A53 is more power efficient than the 32-bit Cortex A7. Once you factor in a 720p display rather than a full HD display then this size of battery should be ok. However, I've been using the P6000 now for several days and I've come to the conclusion that the battery life can really only be considered adequate. It will last from morning through to evening around 15 or 16 hours but you'll only get about 3.5 to 4 hours of on screen time and that's if you avoid intensive tasks like 3D gaming. Talking of 3D gaming, I also found that when you're doing lots of gaming and lots of other intensive tasks the back of the device can become quite warm. According to my individual app testing you'll be able to play 3D games like Riptide for around 3.5 hours on one charge or you can watch YouTube for about 4.5 hours also on one charge. As for audio, the phone has a single speaker on the back of the device. Probably shouldn't expect too much from it, however it can certainly say that it is loud. 
Here is a sample, so you can judge for yourself. However, one irritation is that the speaker is completely flush with the back cover, which means the sound becomes muffled quite easily. Let me show you. In terms of selling a network, the P6000 supports 2G, 3G and 4G LTE. The 2G support is probably global, however the 3G and 4G frequencies are aimed mainly at Europe, Asia and the Middle East. Please check out the written review for more details. Now looking at the memory, the P6000 comes with 2GB of RAM, which is excellent for a phone in this price range. In terms of internal storage, the device comes with 16GB of flash and has an SD card slot which can accept cards up to 64GB. Thankfully, unlike other MediaTek-based devices, the internal storage isn't divided up. You get access to the whole lot, which is around 12GB once you leave space for Android, etc. Now let's turn our attention to the optics. The phone has a 13 megapixel rear-facing camera and a 2 megapixel front-facing camera. The pictures are crisp and the colour reproduction is good. The sensor struggles a bit in low light situations, but for outdoor shots I was quite impressed. The included camera app, which is probably just the standard AOSP app, offers a few interesting features including HDR and panorama. In the settings you can change things like the exposure level, the scene type, the white balance, face detection and so on. Overall the app is fairly comprehensive, but it doesn't have any advanced modes or filters. You can also install and use third party apps including Google's camera app. If you'd like to see more sample shots, then you should check out the written review on the Android Authority website. You'll find the link in the description below. In terms of software, the P6000 runs stock Android 4.4. You get access to Google Play and all of Google services including YouTube, Gmail and Maps. Interestingly, the device is rooted by default and comes with Chainfire's Super SU pre-installed. However, what is more interesting is that Elephone has promised to release an over-the-air update to upgrade this phone to Android 5.0 Lollipop. There is no actual official release date, however it is expected soon. And so what about the price? Well, you can pick up an Elephone P6000 for less than $160, which is amazing when you consider the overall specification of this device. And so there you have it. The Elephone P6000 is a $160 4G LTE phone with a 64-bit processor package. The price is good, the performance is good, and the promise of an upgrade to Android 5.0 Lollipop is quite enticing. My name's Gary Sims, thanks for watching. You can follow me on Google+. Also, don't forget to subscribe to Android Authority's YouTube channel. And a big shout out to my brothers over there at Android Authority, to Jace, Joe, Josh, Lan, Kevin the Tech Ninja, and Ash. And as for me, I'll see you in my next video. Okay, here's hoping for a Lollipop update. Come on, Lollipop. Come on. Your system is up to date.